When it comes to fighting climate change, we often think about planting more trees. But coastal wetlands, like these salt marshes here in southwestern Ireland, capture and store carbon even better than tropical forests. Are we overlooking a climate change solution that's right under our feet? With every high tide, the waves of the Atlantic wash over Derrymore Island marshes. It's more than a scenic view, it's a natural carbon sink. A team from University College Dublin is here to study just how well these marshes help remove carbon from the air. Salt marshes are tidally inundated habitats, so they're low-lying, and the plants that, that live here, they need to be able to tolerate the salty conditions and also the waterlogged conditions that actually make salt marshes good at storing carbon. All plants capture CO2 to grow, but on dry land, they release most of that carbon back into the air when they decompose. Marsh grasses are different. Saturated by salty water, they're less likely to break down, keeping their captured carbon in the soil. Beautiful. We dig half a metre down to find roots and stems that have been holding on to their carbon for a century. We're trying to really get a sense of exactly how much carbon is being stored in this habitat and then we can propose different ways of managing these habitats so that they can continue to store um, carbon. The key tool for this research is the Eddy Covariance Tower, a sensitive instrument that tracks the exchange of gases between the soil and the atmosphere, indicating the actual amount of carbon the marsh is capable of storing. What we calculate here is the fluxes of carbon dioxide and water vapour. We are seeing CO2 uptake during the daytime because of photosynthesis and then carbon dioxide emissions at nighttime because of plant respiration. This thriving wetland is capturing more carbon than it's letting go. But this only happens when conditions strike a balance, not too wet and not too dry. When the systems get flooded, they really struggle to continue to work properly. In the other extreme, if we drain the ecosystem for, say, agricultural use, that really detrimentally affects the system and releases a lot of carbon. If coastal wetlands deteriorate, they can turn from a carbon sink into a carbon source, thus exacerbating climate change. Coastal wetlands around the world are under threat by development, um, agriculture um, and also sea level rise. Within Ireland particularly, we have lost a lot of salt marsh habitat over the last uh, number of years, but also in um, globally, that's true as well. And it's true for mangrove forests and it's true for seagrasses as well. Draining a wetland triggers the decomposition of organic matter stored over the centuries. The Dutch polders are a good example. Underneath these green fields in northern Holland is peatland, a type of wetland where conditions stop plant material from fully decomposing. At nearly five metres below sea level, water has to be pumped out continuously to keep the land dry for dairy cows. But this patch has to be re-wetted, and now typha plants, also known as cattails, are sprouting from peatland submerged in about 15 centimetres of water. Because the soil's no longer exposed to oxygen, it's not releasing nearly as much CO2 from decomposing peat. Aldert van Veren, who's running this experiment, thinks this could be a greener alternative to traditional dairy farming in the area. The amount of carbon which is attached on one litre milk produced on these meadows is about the same uh, emission as burning two litres of benzene, petrol, in your car. The moment you re-wet, there is no carbon emissions coming from this area anymore. But then you can't have cows running around and grass. So you see a different crop. And instead of being a uh, dairy farmer, I am now a fibre farmer. The plant is naturally strong, flexible and resistant to rot. Aldert van Veren sees big potential for its fibres, from non-woven fabrics to greener construction and packaging materials. It's almost impossible to crank it like this. You can try what you like, you can even stand on it. So it has a very stable structure because of these cells and a sponge system in there. And that makes it a good building material and a perfect insulation material. And that's what we think 
will be the future of farming, these kind of things, is making nice building material for the city of Amsterdam in the background. Possible financial incentives for cutting down emissions and restoring natural habitats could help make this land use financially viable in the long term. Plus, new lightweight machines could propel wetland farming to a larger scale, turning captured carbon into sustainable building materials. This is made of just chopped cattail, layers on top of each other, and as a binder we use magnesium oxide. It's not burning, it's self-supporting, and it's an insulator. And those cellulose fibers mixed with water gave you this kind of boards, just made from pure plant fibers without any binder. This is a hydromechanical binding. People don't believe it, but it's true. It works. But coastal carbon capture isn't limited to land. It's also happening underwater. This lagoon in Italy's Emilia-Romagna region is a natural fish habitat used for extensive aquaculture. The patches of seagrass provide more than just an ideal nursery for fish. Globally, these underwater plants capture 10% of all carbon buried in ocean sediment. Half a century ago, all local lagoons were carpeted with seagrasses. Most of these plants have since been wiped out, likely due to pollution. Now the European-funded project Life Transfer is replanting surviving grasses in nearby lagoons, inspired by promising results from a pilot site near Venice. Bisogna invertire il processo, arrivare a una fase in cui invece ci sia in espansione, come è successo alla Laguna di Venezia, per cui abbiamo un buon esempio di successo che vogliamo esportare in tutto il Mediterraneo e non solo, in tutta Europa. Led by Graziano Caramori, the research team has come up with a method to give seagrasses a new home. They lift patches from a donor site and swiftly move them to another spot with similar characteristics. Their aim is to boost the odds that these underwater plants turn into lush seabed meadows. In the long term, this should result in cleaner water, less coastal erosion and new safe havens for aquatic wildlife. Sicuramente noi faremo un enorme regalo all'ambiente perché migliora la biodiversità dell'ambiente ma faremo un regalo a noi stessi perché aumentiamo la capacità di sequestro di anidride carbonica e di conseguenza si riesce a dare un piccolo contributo alla lotta contro il cambiamento climatico. From salt marshes to sea grasses, some of the best solutions to the climate challenge are right at our shorelines.